So uh, Richard and I didn't actually coordinate these presentations, but they may be the best one-two presentation that I've, I've, uh, I've seen. Um, former global VP of uh, data analytics, people keep asking me, what am I doing besides drinking wine and laying on the beach for the last couple of months? Uh, this is what I'm doing. Um, do we have a clicker somewhere? Uh, cool. All right, I'm gonna tell you a story here, um, a narration for how this whole thing that Richard described actually might come about. And this is pretty uh, earth changing for the advertising industry, for the digital, for the things that we're all talking about. Anybody in here who works with data, people's data in the US, tell me this. You work with people's data, you do data mashing, you use it for advertising targeting. How about in Europe? Okay. What I'm gonna describe fundamentally alters and expands the entire way in which we use people data today. So I, I presented this slide last year and I said, everybody who data and analytics is gonna change the world. It's gonna turn it upside down. And then I thought back for this presentation, what, or actually over the past year, what is actually changing? Every bit and byte of people's data is going to become available. The Internet of Things, cars, telecom, you name it, finance, insurance, healthcare, DNA, family history, anything that you can basically create is going to be there. So the reality is, is that the wave we're dealing with, the big wave of big data, is actually people data in its core essence. There's a lot of other data, but that's the core. Now, let me describe a world in which it's almost utopian. I've got to be quick here because they gave me five total minutes. Utopia, if you're a company and you want to advertise or use people's data, you should be able to ask them to do it, they give you permission, and you do what you say with the data. You have all of their data across every single piece of their life accessible, and if you get permission to do it, you can do it. It would be exchange-based. You could put money into an exchange. They look at the offers out there. They allow you to anonymize, anonymize, that's a hard word to say. They allow you to have their identity or not, their location or not, and they get paid a value for that money. Now, why, how can we get there? I'm going to tell a story about how that might happen. There's three seismic forces that are taking place right now. You guys in this room are actually making the first one happen today. Today, you are creating value out of people's data. This whole room is full of people creating value out of people's data. That's what we're doing. When we data match, when we advertise, when we target, when we sell our services, because we're getting more specific with the analytics and the, and the, the digital uh, differentiation of targeting, that's what we're doing. That's creating knowledge of people. Now, Richard showed the stats. It's only 20% across the board. But that is rising, and the controversies are rising, and it's causing legislation. GDPR is something global, data, GDPR, protection resolution, data pro general data protection resolution is fundamentally putting a stake in the ground and changing the way things work. If you're an American in here and you don't know what that is, it's a very important thing to find out about. I'm not going to go into it. What that's doing then is it's creating solutions that create more value, transparency, things that change the way in which we can use the data and increase, again, awareness and, and create new solutions and legislation. Now, let me tell the story then of how this might happen. All right, You guys are out there, you're creating value, you're creating solutions. There's a ton of VCs out there making a lot of money off this, and we're getting things happening today. Industries such as telecom, which is brilliant, insurance, finance, governments are looking at how do we give data back to people? How do we give them control? The GDPR says, effectively, consumers control the data. If they control the data, you could give them services that allow the data to go to them. In 2018, GDPR says every, com every company has to have an API that gives the data back anyway. The service then could go and acquire all the data as the agent of the individual. Not just the telecom or just the insurance, but all the data. And it will become legally compliant in 2018. When you start taking all of people's data and you raise their awareness, and there's a few cycles here, that I'm not going to get to in great order. What you've done is you've created an amazing data source. 
Any of us would love to get our hands on every piece of data to understand the human being at its most fundamental. That creates people data exchanges. This is the part where you get the data. So if somebody has all the data in these personal data sources and you put an exchange on there for the anonymization aspect, then Google isn't the only people out there with all the data. Everybody has access to data. And when you have everybody has access to the data, you're talking about a whole different way in which value, uh, monetization, control, and ownership is, is run and managed. Now, I gave you a very speedy version of this, but if this does a few loops of what I'm talking about, specific industries followed by wide, so if a, for instance, if a country actually decided to put their health care and every person in the country had this app and then acquired all their data across the board, you've just completely changed the advertising, the data, the data science, everything in which we do in this room and eliminated the need for data mashing. It's a pretty bright scenario. It's a very utopian with a lot of curves and a lot of twists, but the forces that are in play right now make this almost, in many ways, whether it's three years or it's 10 years, almost a guaranteed reality because it's more efficient and better than any other solution anybody can offer. Thank you.